you wrote in your 2013 Texas Law Review article uh, that you tend to agree with the view that when a justice's best understanding of the Constitution conflicts with Supreme Court precedent or case law, it is, quote, more legitimate for her to follow her preferred view rather than apply the precedent. And I want to run through a few examples. So Brown v. Board of Education, as we know, that holds that the 14th Amendment prohibits states from segregating schools on the basis of race. So uh, is that precedent? Um, yes. That can't be overruled. Well, that is precedent. Um, mm -hmm. And as I think I said in that same article, it's super precedent. People consider it to be on that very small list of things that are so widely established and agreed upon by everyone. Mm -hmm. Calls for its overruling simply don't exist. Okay. Well, you also separately acknowledge that in uh, Planned Parenthood v. Casey, the Supreme Court's controlling opinion talked about in the reliance interests on Roe v. Wade, which it treated in that case as super precedent. Is Roe a super precedent? How would you define super precedent? I, I, I actually, I might have thought someday I'd be sitting in that chair. I'm not. I'm up here, so I'm asking okay, you. Okay, well, people so. use super precedent differently. Okay. The way that it's used in the scholarship and the way that I was using it in the article that you're reading from was to define cases that are so well settled that no political actors and no people seriously push for their overruling. And I'm answering a lot of questions about Roe, which I think indicates that Roe doesn't fall in that category. And scholars across the spectrum say that doesn't mean that Roe should be overruled. But descriptively, it does mean that it's a case, not a case that everyone has accepted and doesn't call for its overruling. I don't okay, think so I've here's, what's, here's what's interesting to me. You said that Brown is, and I know my time is running out, is a super precedent. That's something uh, the Supreme Court has not even said, but you have said that. So if you say that, why won't you say that about Roe v. Wade, a case that the court's controlling opinion in that Planned Parenthood v. Casey case has described as a super precedent? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, well, Senator, I can just give you the same answer that I just did. I'm using a term in that article that is from the scholarly literature. It's actually one that was developed by scholars who are you know, certainly not conservative scholars who take a more progressive approach to the Constitution. And again, you know, as, as Richard Fallon from Harvard said, Roe is not a super precedent because calls for its overruling have never ceased, but that doesn't mean that Roe should be overruled. It just means that it doesn't fall on the small handful of cases like Marbury versus Madison and Brown versus the board that no one questions anymore. Is United States for Virginia military, is that super precedent? Senator Klobuchar, if you continue to ask questions about super precedents that aren't on the list of the super precedents that I discussed in the article that are well acknowledged in the constitutional law literature, every time you ask the question, I will have to say that I can't grade it. Okay. Well, I am then left with looking at the tracks of your record and where it leads the American people. And I think it leads us to a place that's going to have severe repercussions for them. Thank you.